How's it going, everyone? Mufara here. Welcome to Heliopolis Radio. I hope you enjoy the content. Peace and blessings to the people. How's it going, everyone? Mufara here. Welcome to Heliopolis Radio. Thank you for tuning in. I'm um, hoping you've had a good week thus far. Uh, we're going to be continuing with the Your Body Speaks Your Mind podcast series. It's by Deb Shapiro. Uh, the book is called Your Body Speaks Your Mind by Deb Shapiro. Uh, and it's actually also the subsection is understanding how your emotions and thoughts affect you physically. Um, yeah, this is there's a lot of self-help books out there and... Uh, I'm not a, it's a very saturated industry, but this is one that uh, definitely uh, forced me to do some honest reflecting. And uh, that's what I liked so much about this book. (laughs) It was actually given to me as a gift uh, for my birthday um, by a family friend. And I don't know what emotional state I must have been in to have warranted receiving this as a gift, but it was a gift indeed. And so, yeah, I'll just be sharing some of the chapters that I read from the book and some of the interesting points. Uh, I felt that the book forced me to be uh, a bit more honest with myself and uh, my personal reflections. And uh, I think anything that any book that does that is a, is a pretty decent one. Um, obviously, that's uh, my personal opinion. But let's just jump straight into it. So, um, yeah, the name the, the name of this chapter was the language of your thoughts and emotions. And it starts off by saying, "As you think, so you become. Your thoughts are seeds that germinate and grow." The seeds take root and begin to influence and shape the cell structures of your physical body. Um, I would agree with that statement simply because we've seen in certain uh, when you're in a certain emotional state, a mental state of stress, anxiety. At least you can see examples of this. Um, you know, your digestive system shuts down. You, you adrenal uh, activity increases. You produce more cortisol simply because of the mental state that is invoking this, uh, I guess, response within your body. And so, yeah, she also goes on to say that illness um, can be seen as a learning experience and an opportunity to deepen your relationship with yourself, which is very true um, because, you know, once you're ill, you know, the body is a mechanism for you to carry out whatever functions you need to in in daily living. Um, When that's compromised, you have no choice, you know, Uh, you have to figure out what's Uh, causing this internal disharmony within yourself. So she goes on to say, the most common blocks are the negative attitudes that a lot of people carry around them all the time. And being a perpetrator of this myself, guilty as charged, um, you know, your your emotional baggage and your bullshit, you know, uh, it weighs down on you and it starts to, people pick up on it. Um, They pick up on your, your... your, your, your tendencies and your vibes and, and, and they even, you know, your honest friends will even call you out on it. So, yeah, um, she goes on to say that uh, all those such factors start within the mind. They quickly manifest in the body, becoming a stiff shoulder, a sluggish liver, potentially cancer or any other illness. Um, she also uh, takes into consider environment, she takes into consideration environmental factors and genetic influences. So with regards to environmental factors, she states that the immune system needs antigens to stimulate a response and build greater immunity. Um, when conf- otherwise, when confronted uh, with an external factor such as a virus, there will be little uh, or no resistance from the immune system. So she encourages, um, you know, nature has equipped us with an a immune system that needs to be tested, essentially, and to develop itself and its resistance to any external factors that might affect it. And so, yeah, and also she states that um, chemical pollution is rising at an alarming rate uh, in our internal and external environment, uh, such as things as our foodstuff. um, And, um, yeah, it's creating long-term difficulties such as chemical intolerance. Um, we cannot, she goes on to state that we cannot treat our crops, animals, and air with chemicals and continue to pour chemical waste into the ecosystem. 
You can introduce some limits on the amounts of toxins you consume through foods that you eat and your lifestyle. Um, she also says that you should be aware of the attitudes within yourself that stop you from caring for yourself and the environment. Um, you have to want to make a difference, and the best place to s you can start is in your own home. Um, this is not some go green bullshit, but um, really what it is is just taking the practical steps to, you know, um, to preserve your physical and mental well-being. Um, you know, we're ultimately living organisms on this planet that we live in harmony with the environment, and how we interact with that environment will have a infect on our well-being. Um, you know, with regards to the food and lifestyle, you know, the food and the lifestyle, um, this is not about any fad that's out there or whatever, you know, diet obsession that's there. It's just about trying to eat more sensibly, you know, in terms of the quality of whatever your food preference is and, and, and actually, you know, continually uh, being disciplined in that uh, facet. Obviously, we know we have financial restrictions. We have a whole bunch of things, but uh, trying your best to navigate it, around it, um, which starts with your own home, really. Um, that's a very reasonable solution in my mind. And so, yeah, um, with regards to genetic influence, um, yeah, uh, she says that diet, exercises, and lifestyle, all of which in turn create strength, resilience, and good health, thus counterbalancing the effects of genetic predisposition. Um, we all have a pre uh, genetic predis uh, genetic uh, baggage. Sorry, not predisposition. We all have a genetic baggage that we carry from our family line, um, and it's just about how we handle that at best. You know, um, if you know that diabetes runs in your family, then maybe considering a low GI diet that's a practical solution you can take, rather than you know maybe you know eating and having a lifestyle in which you consume foodstuffs that are pro diabetic and saying oh you know just in the family um, you know there's certain factors that you can take and you can control within yourself um, she also said saying she also states that saying things like I know I will get this illness because my mother had it and so did my grandmother uh, it encourages a sense of fatalism which is yeah you know it's unhealthy again um, yeah and the body hears and responds to your thoughts and words so with regards to psycho emotional factors this is one where I was really kind of uh, warped in. Um, yeah, she states that emotional pain is just as real as physical pain and um, long-held resentments such as anger, bitterness, hurt, fear, guilt, and shame all play a role in debilitating your energy. Um, you may spend many years building a wall around your heart in order to protect it from being hurt, uh, but in doing so, uh, you also wall off your, your own feelings of love. And I didn't know that uh, actually um, X-ray imaging provides evidence of periods of slow or minimal bone growth corresponding to times of isolation in a child's life. So it's interesting, I mean, uh, especially with how emotional pain uh, feels, uh, you know, being just as real as physical pain. We've seen, in, you know, instances of heartbreak where there is no physical pain or harm that's, uh, you know, inflicted, but... Uh, the damage, I mean, you know, the, 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 the effects are so devastating, you start to think, you know, this may be worse than physical pain itself. Um, the, she also shares a personal story which I found interesting. Um, she stated that my mother had four children, of which I was the oldest. There was always a sibling who needed more attention than me, and my enduring impression is of neglect and of emotional, uh, of neglect of my emotional needs. Um, in rejecting food, I was confirming the rejection I was feeling inside. And so, yeah, we all have different family dynamics, um, but um, it's interesting to see, not interesting, but it's powerful to see how these events, uh, they leave a subconscious impression on how we end up acting and behaving in response to these events without not even being aware unless you've done the personal reflections of the work internally. Um, and so it's important, I think, um, especially if, we've, if there's been any difficulties within, you know, the childhood, um, within the family dynamics. And she also goes on to in the next subsection called repressed, ignored, and denied. Um, every emotion that is repressed inevitably due to our experience, or, oh yeah, every emotion that is repressed is inevitably due to our experience of love. Uh, either being hurt and, and rejected by those that we love or simply not being loved at all. Um, 
and that's a tricky one because everyone again the family dynamics is different and the nature of love is different so it's very subjective but it's important to maybe look into those feelings you know and ask yourself some questions regarding that um, and some of us you go we come from places where you feel you must appear perfect uh, simply because you inherited this from your parents um, you know uh, I can't speak for everyone um, but I've noticed that in certain family dynamics the parental uh, figures or structure um, are very very uh, strong willed individuals who have uh, very little emotional compromise or strong emotional resolve uh, just simply because of upbringing and, 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 and generational differences but ultimately it's hard to replicate um, you know no, no product is a perfect replication of where it came from and so, yeah, it's important to look at these type of dynamics. Um, she recommends that, uh, can you find patterns of repression in your family? Um, are there any unresolved family problems or hidden secrets? And coming from an African family background, uh, not an Afri African family background, but an African family dynamic, um, there's a lot of that. There's a lot of that nonsense that's going on because, you know, there are always things that are unspoken of. There's always drama and there's always an elephant in the room. Um, which is always hard to confront and it results in a lot of uh, cyclical uh, destructive behavioral patterns simply because there's been no attention being paid to certain issues, right? Um, and so she goes on to mention that rage is repressed because it is rarely appropriate to release it uh, at any point in time. And so um, she also mentions that uh, repressed rage also gives rise to irrational fear hate and bitterness all of which uh, detrimentally influences your health and uh, yeah uh, it's interesting because the rage one is very difficult right um, a lot of us are angry <laughs> and for various reasons um, but it's always interesting we we do so well to suppress that anger thinking we've controlled it but honestly uh, there's always that one point in time where we snap right um, so yeah, she actually recommended a rage review, and I found that um, pretty uh, pretty interesting. And uh, she just recommends that you find a quiet quiet place to be, um, and just study to begin uh, to see uh, to to see how your body is feeling and responds to whatever invokes rage within you, and see the area which is most affected, and find a way to uh, release the tension within that area. Um, obviously, that solution is not fully, uh, you know, conclusive for me. Uh, there have to be probably other outlets, but uh, it's a decent enough recommendation, uh, in my opinion. And so, uh, apologies for the page turning. Oof, that was bad. Uh, apologies for the page turning. Um, the, ne the next one is a, a very uh, difficult one. Um, grief is also repressed. Um, grief at uh, that which has been lost or that which will never be. And uh, this is a difficult one. Um, everyone has their own uh, experience of grief. Um, but yeah, uh, she says that without uh, taking time to acknowledge the inner pain, uh, that the pain is real, and uh, when repressed, it can lead to heart and immune system issues. Um, yeah, um, it's difficult because, you know, most uh, grief is, they always state that grief uh, is most felt within the heart more than anything. And so, um, be it a heartbreak, a separation, a loss, um, there are many, many forms of grief, but uh, it, that one's the one which manifests obviously the deepest. And so, yeah, um, it's, 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 um, yeah, uh, she states that. Um, denial, which comes along hand in hand with grief, um, enables you to uh, convince yourself that everything is fine and that there is no problem. But uh, when beneath the surface, if you dare to look, you'll find a ma uh, you find uh, a mass feelings of trauma, and it's very true. It's very true, and uh, that one requires you to be very honest and uh, I guess vulnerable with yourself to a certain degree. Um, and whenever that comes in. Uh, in whatever form of comfort uh, allows you to indulge grief that way, uh, be it meditation or personal reflection or journaling, but uh, it's important. Or psychology, you know, uh, seeing a psychotherapist, um, you know, um, there's a lot of lot of factors around that. But um, whenever we don't uh, bring uh, to conscious uh, the feelings of grief, 
um, we leave room for massive pain uh, to uh, strike our immune system. And it's true. Um, we're not uh, invincible. Uh, grief, does this, uh, <laughs> grief takes its toll on everyone. And so, yeah, um, she actually recommends a listen to your body quiz, but I, I won't go too much to that. I think you'd have to buy the book uh, to, to um, you know, uh, see what those re recommendations were. But basically, the listen to your body quiz was essentially a handful of questions in which you ask yourself um, certain things, you know, in terms of uh, trauma. Has there been a recent experience of it within you? Um, in terms of rage, is there anything that has been triggering you or has consistently um, brought anger out of you and figuring out what those are in order to, uh, you know, rectify the issue? Um, she also brings up an interesting one at the end of every chapter, which is uh, fringe benefits. Um, you know, um, I guess this was one of the interesting things about this author. She is very honest uh, and staunch with how she goes about it. Um, she even states that, you know, what are the excuses that, you know, your emotional and uh, mental issues kind of give you freedom from, you know, what aspects of life in general does it uh, prevent you from facing, you know, um, certain things, you know, when we're ill, she states that sometimes illness gives you the love and attention that you seek, you know, that you've subconsciously desired, you know, all of a sudden people care about you, whereas before they didn't, you know. And so we kind of uh, dwell in that illness or that sickness simply because um, we feel that that's the only way to get the love and attention that we desire, which is unhealthy, obviously, but um, it's coming from a very, very sensitive space, uh, sensitive space, place. Um, and so, yeah, I found uh, this book is a very interesting one. I'll be sharing more chapters and they actually get, it gets a bit more in depth and the issues become a bit more complex, really complex, actually. But uh, I hope you guys enjoyed the chapter. I went into 17 minutes, which was a bit longer than I'd want. But uh, thanks for tuning in. Uh, there'll be another episode of Retrospect coming out this weekend. Uh, enjoy the rest of your week, and uh, peace and blessings to the people. Thank you.